Hello sewing friends and happy um, Friday afternoon if it's Friday afternoon where you it is Friday afternoon where I am and it is a beautiful beautiful summer day and I am sipping on some iced tea. I think my ice all melted already. So welcome everyone. This is um a new live show. I'm planning on doing this on the uh, right around the second Friday of every month. I'm calling it Tea and Tutorials, and it's just a time for us to get together, sip some tea, hot or cold, whatever you prefer, and um, uh, learn something new for our sewing world. So today I have a special guest, but I want to welcome everyone that's here. If you um, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. I see lots of lots of friends, and I'm so happy to have all of you here today. I'm Joanne Banco from Let'sGoSew.com, and this is the Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco live show, where sewing enthusiasts gathered to be inspired and make the most of their machines. And today we're going to learn about paper piecing. So I'd love to hear in the chat how many of you are paper piecing people. <laughs> I've done a little bit of it in my day, but I wanted to bring on somebody really special today, uh, and that is um, my friend Beth Sweet. So let's bring Beth on and say hello, everybody. Hey, Beth. Hey, hey, every, hey everybody out there. Hey, Joanne. Good to see you. It's so good to see you. Let's say hi to a few friends here. I got June is here. Uh, Renee is here. Uh, Nana 31331. <laughs> that one, that's a hard number to get. Um, Rosalind is in here. Yes, Rosalind, this is Eastern time. It's um, two o'clock Eastern where I am. And Margaret's here from North Carolina. Robin's here from Maryland. Wow. Nice. Is here from South Texas. <laughs> Debbie's here. Annette's here. Star Raymond. Hey, Star Raymond. Always good to have you here. Leah, Linda, Jan, Noreen, Linda, Reen here. Reen's here. Reen Wilcoxon, our good friend. Oh, I know her. Welcome. Birdie, Dawn, Robin, Susan, Lori, Linda. Wow. Bonnie. That's nice. We've got um, Stephen Norman Kaufman. I don't know if Steve and Norma. I'm sorry. I said Norman. Steve and Norma. Kaufman. I don't know if both Steve and Norma are here, but <laughs> if you're both here, welcome. So this, like I said, is a new show. I don't know if you're, if you uh, like taking tea breaks where you are, Beth, but I, there's nothing better in the afternoon than a, than a tea break for me. And of course today I'm drinking iced. So I'd love to hear in the chat if anyone else is a um, tea connoisseur, what kind of tea you like. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my tea to start with here today. I'm drinking my absolute all-time favorite tea. I've been drinking this tea for, oh, probably a couple of years now, but it was totally a new new thing for me. I wanted to cut back on coffee, and I was used to drinking coffee in the morning, and I wanted to find some sort of a healthy substitute. So I started making a hot tea with fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. So my husband actually makes this for me, and nice. um, he takes fresh ginger, peels it, Oh. slices about uh, an inch or so of a you know piece of ginger, the ginger and steeps it in i have a you know whole carafe that we fill with uh you know the boiled water and um steep that for it takes a couple hours so if you want to drink this first thing in the morning um, <laughs> one trick is and well, either that or um, put the, the ginger in a little bit of hot water at night and let it sit and then the next day, just add the rest of the hot water. But once I have, you know, you know, made it, then I love putting it in the refrigerator and chilling it, add some ice. And it is just so incredibly refreshing. It, it has a little bit of a, almost like a little bit of a bite to it. But it does. yeah, it, you put a little, if you want to sweeten it a little bit, you can, but it's just very Refreshing. Okay. Okay. Well, if my hands weren't all busy, I would probably would try some tea. And we've got a nice hot day down here, 95 or something. And I think they said with the 
heat uh, index, it was going to be feel like a hundred. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice We've been hundred. having great temperatures here, like 70s, low 80s, 60 in the nighttime. And it's just <laughs> been really comfortable. But I see, okay, we've got a few people. Here. I saw Gay join us. Um, they want to try cake. Some people like ginger in their tea. Ginger is good for you. Lori likes um, peach sun tea. Very good. Mm, Very good. good. So, Beth, do you have a favorite tea when you do have time for tea? I'm afraid I'm a, a bag of tea and put it in hot water and whatever okay. there I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I do like flavors, though, so I do like the flavored kind. Yeah, it's fun to try different ones. So we'll be during during these different shows. I'll have uh, different tea to drink and, and talk about. But well, I'll have to yeah. try them now. And with that ginger, yeah. that does sound good. Oh, it's wonderful. Very, very, very refreshing, hot or cold. So, Beth, um, not everybody knows who you are. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? I gave a, a little bit of an introduction um, in the uh, all the emails and everything that I sent out, but you are my friend from Florida, and yes. you are not only a paper piecing expert, you are a quilt shop owner. So tell us just a little bit about your two quilt shops. Well, thank you, Joanne. And Thank you for letting me join you today, too. So that was exciting. And I actually had a, a good time preparing for today. So Joanne uh, knows that I like to do paper piecing. And so uh, I had fun searching for a project um, that we will have the link, by the way, for you guys to enjoy, too. So you have that where you can download it. Um, I am in Melbourne, Florida, as Joanne was saying. And uh, the name of my store is Quilts and Light. And then I recently opened up a second store down in Sebastian, Florida. It's about an hour away from here. Um, we carry brother and baby lock machines at, at both locations. And of course, um, to honor Joanne today, we are doing our brother machine. We're using our Stellaire. So both stores sell that, but I do try to carry different fabric at each one of them. Um, we have a classroom up here, so I'm actually in the classroom today and actually look for an email from me or let me know if you would like to get on my email list. And um, we are posting our July classes. Uh, you can go to my website at quiltsandlace.com. Uh, the store in Sebastian, by the way, is called Sweet Time Quilting because my last name is Sweet. And you can also go to sweettimequilting.com to get there. But um, so uh, I've just have been having a lot of fun um, ordering fabric, selling machines. People are starting to trade them in um, because in anticipation of the new ones coming out. So looking forward to that. I can't hear you, Joanne. Not yet. But thank you everybody for joining today and i look forward to uh to talking about paper piecing yeah there we go i think i'm on now go. good so yeah august is the time when sewing machine companies um generally have their dealer conventions where dealers like you who are selling the machines and providing all that good service to all of the um, customers who sew out there um and they you know have a big convention and this year we're having one live in nashville so i'll be able to yeah. To see you there at I'll the, get to the see you. yeah yeah it's been i can't wait years. yeah oh, it's been Excellent. way too long i can't wait to see you there um it's gonna be a lot a lot of fun i'm i'm, I'm looking at the chat here we've got uh quite a few people that that love tea and um are interested in either trying that ginger tea or uh they already have so Got some great, great uh, comments in here. We'll heck up to go back and read them later. I will so, read them later for sure. Definitely. We'll know what to drink next time. But I'm going to um, just bring up a real quick picture and show everybody what we have planned to do today. So let's, let me get this one up here. If I can get that going. Um, all right. Once again, this is um, time for you to sip tea and watch sewing tutorials. So, um, I've already introduced my guest instructor today, Beth, and uh, this show will feature multiple guests and I'll be doing some demonstrations myself, but uh, again, just a, a fun little time so that we can um, get together and learn something new. And our featured project today is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paper pieced teacup. So Beth, I just, I can't wait for you to show us 
how this works. Um, my understanding, I'm going to bring you, bring us both back up on screen. My understanding is that you are um, in love with paper piecing. Yes, I do. That came out just this absolutely. This is my miniature gorgeous. version. So that'll be the little uh, mug rug. And the correct size is this one here. He's about wow. 10 by 14 inches. That is a big block. In a minute, I'll bring up the whole uh, PDF, which oh, is yes, where right. we got inspiration from. And you, you, you got to print it out, right? Yes. Uh huh. In from okay. the cold, and this is a Moda free pattern. So thank you for posting yeah. that for them. Um, yeah, I'll I'll actually um, I'll have the link in the show notes after uh, the show is over, and I'll also add it to the uh, Facebook page so everybody can find it. Excellent. But let me just pop it up here right now so everybody can see what that looks like. Okay. And I'll just picture. yeah, just turn the the pages. And um, obviously, this uh, this is from not obviously, but this is from Moda. Moda is a uh, an incredible. Uh, fabric manufacturer. Beth, you carry Moda fabrics in, in your store. Yes, definitely. Lots of uh, salads. And this is from the um, Create Joy collection by um, oh. Kate Spain. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> It says yeah. it right there on there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And obviously they did it in a in a holiday theme. So let me just um, breeze through the the pages here, but you can see um, once you get the link, you'll be able to to download this exact PDF yourself. It's got all of the the fabric requirements, um, and then again, they did it in a holiday theme, which actually is kind of fun because those are probably some of the easiest fabrics to to pick. I bet in your store right now, you've got lots and lots and lots of holiday mm -hmm. themed fabrics that people could could pick from. But you did a great job on starting with something completely new and fresh and floral and summery. So oh, I love what you did. It actually is um, Christmas fabric, believe it or not. Now, some of it's grunge, so it's the Moda grunge, but the flowery really? is actually a Christmas um, a fabric. Wow. I had no idea. Really out of the box, yeah, Christmas fabric. Mm -hmm. And then the... Uh, the saucer that the teacup is on is a snowflake material, although that's hard to see. Oh, wow. I couldn't see that. Well, that's neat. Well, you know, it, 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 any, any time is a good time for a snowflake print in my world, because I just think they're, they're so pretty. They're such an interesting, uh, you know, motif. Um, looking at some of the comments here, Lori says that's very pretty. Linda says she loves it. Thank you. Um, and, um, RG says she has to, she'd love to add that to her mug rug collection. And, oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, we're going to show you how to do it. So this is actually a mistake. <laughs> so okay. I'll do the mistake and then we can do the real one. Oh, that's good. We love we love mistakes. Beth, would you believe we have um, Marisol Caras Carrasco here um, from Belize? Nice. Marisol, Ooh, would I like I... To be, I'd oh. like to be there. Yeah. How nice to have you. We're so glad to have you. I don't know if we have anybody else long distance, but if you did, um, make sure you point out where you're from because I'd love to I'd love to know. Yeah, all right. I'm going to flip to the next page and there it tells you all the cutting instructions. I think this this whole PDF is so detailed and so thorough that um, anybody can can do this if they if they want to. But we're going to talk about a little bit that this particular instruction um, sheet um, is designed for you to do traditional piecing. Correct. And you have done a masterful job of changing that into paper piecing, which we're going to see in a minute. It was Let's easy. Just, we'll just peek at the blocks real quick. Um, there's the, the steam, and we're going to yeah, talk more about that steam. a little later because we've got a multitude of ways to do that, so we will definitely talk about that. And there's the piecing for that. There's the cup that we decided to to use for this um, project. Yeah, I think it looks most like a teacup, <laughs> and um, you know, it just has that really uh, kind of streamlined look. I think also, Beth, would you agree that this was one of the little bit easier ones? Yes. To do, they, they are all pretty similar, but if you start with this one, I think you will have no problem doing the rest of them. There's little 
tweaking um, on some of them to uh, turn it into paper piecing. But hopefully um, my instructions today will be clear enough that you guys, if you want to do it, um, the paper piece method, you'll be able to do it just fine. I'm sure you're a great teacher. So I'm sure you're going to, you're going to um, clue us all into that. And you can see that the steam on this one was actually pieced. And we decided to uh, eliminate that, make it a little uh, quicker to do with paper piecing. That would take a little bit more time and then um, use some different ways to add that little steam effect. So I'll just pop through the rest of these really quick so everybody can see um, what it looks like. But um, this is just a really yeah. fun project, fun, 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 and, and just has lots of potential, lots of possibilities. I could see doing um stitching some different sayings you know let's you know if you had somebody that did have favorite hot beverages and you could embroider right here in the blocks and and you know make yeah. a statement for yeah. yeah exactly or just you know cute messages stay cozy stay warm you know sending love and hugs all those kinds of <laughs> all those kinds of things oh. All right. So are you ready to go over to the machine or did you want to? I am me? ready. Um, uh, so um, I did just want to get a few definitions and also make sure that they, they have all the supplies that they need. OK, um, please so, do. Um, one thing is, is that um, people um, don't always know what paper piecing is and um, they don't know the difference between foundation piecing, paper piecing and English paper piecing. So I did bring. Um, uh, what we're not doing today, which is the English paper piecing. And that's where you cut your little uh, hexagons out of your material. And then uh, there's templates, there's there's all kinds of things that people can use um, to cut the hexagon shape. And then they hand stitch. So they use the four letter word hand. <laughs> hand stitching is usually how English paper piecing is done. They're gorgeous. So I have seen some things put together of all these little hexagons. And I think um, I think it's called a flower garden or something um, is one design and they're they're beautiful. But we're not going to be doing that today. And the difference between um, well, there's really no difference between foundation um, piecing and paper piecing. Foundation piecing is um, when they do it on. Um, a muslin or a linen or not a linen, but a muslin or a real lightweight material and they sew right on it. Um, another example might be uh, some June Taylor products and we carry those here too. And she's got the batting all printed out with where you stitch on it. And so you are stitching uh, right on the batting and um, it also could be called quilt as you go. Um, but uh, going back to the paper piecing part of it, of it. Um, let's talk about all the supplies that you need. So, so, so some of those other ones you were talking about are actually um, pre-printed on a, a, a material type of base. Correct. Right? And what's the advantage of that, Beth, of having it on a material base rather than paper? Yeah. Oh, precision. Well, I don't know the advantage between on the material on a piece of paper, but the advantage of paper piecing. So I'm so glad you. That was going to be my next question. Mention. That was my next question. <laughs> because that is it. The, I love it. So you don't have to precisely cut out all your pieces like you're going to have to do if you were to make this quilt in the traditional method. You can take scraps. In fact, if you become a paper piecer, you will find that you collect scraps because little things can be now used to create your project. So I like that you do not have to um, cut your pieces precisely. Um, the next thing that I like about it is that it's very precise. So if you've ever had difficulty where your points on something are cut off uh, because you accidentally got it in your seam, you don't have to worry about that anymore because you are sewing on a line and um, as long as you stay on that line, everything turns out perfect. Gotcha. The reason that uh, people do um, make paper piecing um, uh, is that it also might be the only way that you could sew it uh, because of uh, working on the bias. So you don't have to worry about the stretch. Um, odd shapes that would be really hard to piece and to cut. Um, and um, just um, different angles that you might not be able to 
assemble if it, you were having to take all these pieces. And it's all them. about that intricacy factor, right? Where you've got, especially with tiny points, right? I mean, how, I don't even know, how could you get a seam allowance added to some of those things that are so, so tiny? I really like the idea of the fact that it's, um, you know, you can do miniatures. I know you did a small version of that and then the bigger ones, but there again, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I, you know, you know me, I'm not much of a piecer. In fact, I, I, I always love to tell everybody that when I talk to you and I ask, you know, we talk about quilting, you, you always say you're, you're not a quilter. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a piecer. That is so funny because, oh, okay. You got two quilt shops, but you're not a quilter. You're a piecer. So I know you love that, that, you know, the piecing in any way, shape or form, but I, you know, I'm kind of drawn to like, if I start, if I jumped into the world of piecing, I may be a glutton for punishment, but I would want to do miniatures. I'm just fascinated by that. So I don't know if my camera's going to catch that. I can see that pretty good. Yeah. These are actually some designs that have been around for a long time and you can turn these into little Christmas tree ornaments. So there is a Christmas tree that I really, really like. That's a paper pieced project. And then you can use Christmas colors with this and turn them into ornaments and hang it on it. So they're teeny tiny. Um, this ah. one, um, Allison Glass has come out with a whole slew. I've got a couple of them here. And these are miniature paper piece patterns right here. There's another one right here. So you can see that if you were sewing these or cutting these little pieces, that would be painful, I think. <laughs> Um, if you want a mortar starter type of thing, um, I frequently teach the Kimberbell uh, paper piecing booklets. So um, let me see if I can get oh, that. Oh, yeah. In there. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. That's really yeah. something. So the Kimberbell does have these nice um, uh, patterns that are super easy. So they're great for beginners. They've got good instructions on it, how to do paper piecing. Plus, also, it comes in three sizes. So you can have small, medium, and large. And this is the first one I think that she came out with. So this is one that I like a lot too. And I've done many of these. So these are all paper piece projects. And, and so let me just ask you, are those, um, so the papers are in there and they're, and you, and what, what would you do? Make a copy of that and, and print it? Correct. So different artists do different ways. For the Kimber Bell, they just have it printed in the booklet. And so you do need to take that to your copier and you copy them so you don't tear these pages out. Uh, some designers, however, do include the, the paper itself. So it's that really um, uh, newspaper kind of uh, print or it is um, even that tissue paper type of print. Actually, these here do come with the tissue paper print inside it. So I can show you that real quick. And then I'll also show you how I photocopy. So this is what it looks like. So you'll recognize these from, I think of them as garment sewing and patterns. It's that real thin tissue paper. So you sew yeah. right on this and you can see they're all printed. That's exactly, exactly what they look like. Definitely. Um, we got just a, a question I want to address real quick. Uh, Kathleen's asking where to get the instructions. There is, a, is there a link for the PDF? Yes, Kathleen, if I, if I can get a chance to squeeze it in here in the in the comments i will but it will definitely be in the show notes so watch for it there and you're watching on youtube so you'll see it as soon as the video is over i will put it right there in the show notes and you can go and download it directly yourself um so just to show an example um, i'm going to go through my supplies of one of the things that i like is vellum paper so i don't know you can't really see me through this but this is vellum and i can see through it so i do like that about it and this yeah. is just one of the kimberbell projects so note that it's numbered and they do put shading. They don't always put shading on the paper piecing patterns, but this particular one is. All righty. And where do you get the actual um, vellum? So we do sell. So let me show that. Hmm. And, and obviously that works like with any uh, inkjet printer? Yes. Okay, is it designed yeah. specifically nothing, for Yeah, nothing special. It's a piece of paper. So okay. vellum is a paper that sometimes you see when they send fancy invitations. You yeah. Know, use that vellum that you Yeah, it's got that to. beautiful, almost uh, almost of a waxy look kind of. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. very, very pretty. So there's nothing really special about the paper that I use it. What I like about it is that I can see through it. 
So um, in paper piecing, as you're going to find out in a moment, we work backwards and upside down. Yeah, that's the, tr <laughs> that's the tricky part there. <laughs> and so I do like to be able to see through the paper so that um, uh, I, I can see what I'm sewing on and where to position my um, fabric. Um, there are a couple other choices. So this is um, foundation paper, and it's just that newspaper print. So this is one brand. Uh -huh. There's many brands out there. And, and that's it's just, probably it's just like newspaper print. Okay. So it's probably very economical, too, I would imagine. It is. So this is cheaper than the vellum. Um, it does tear super easily, but, of course, I cannot see through it. Okay. And um, then another one, and I haven't used this, but it's an excellent idea too. This is Alex Anderson called Select um, Print and Piece. So what's wonderful about this one is it is a little transparent. You can print on it. So you put it in your printer and print on it. Uh, but it's also water soluble because the only painful part about paper piecing is you do have to then tear away the paper. Okay. And that is another difference between English paper piecing um, and and uh, paper piecing is that paper piecing, you tear the paper away and throw it away. English paper piecing, usually they keep the templates and they can reuse them. And then, of course, foundation piecing, it stays right on that fabric and you don't have to remove it. So uh -huh. the only painful part about it is removing the paper. Actually, that could be kind of fun to pull that, you know, when you're sitting and you got your, you're trapped sitting yep. somewhere and you just watching want some good movie. movie. Yeah. Um, so, so Francie has a question, Beth. She says, does yes. the vellum tear off easier? What would you say to that? Um, it doesn't tear any easier than the newspaper print, but uh, when, what we're going to do on our sewing machine is we're going to set our stitch length to very, very fine stitches. So I stitch it anywhere between 1.4 and 1.8, depending on how confident I am that I do not need to use a seam ripper. Okay. Um, oh, good point. 1.4. So since those stitches are so close together, uh, the paper tears very easily. Okay, and I have finished half of it, so I can show you that. This, by the way, is um, uh, printed onto vellum. So this is what it looks like if I were to just print it the size that's in the PDF file. Ah. And then that's how you can get your miniature mug rug version. Is just okay. use it, print it straight onto vellum paper or whatever type you want to use and you can use it perfect so i was wondering how you did that i knew that you you know you translated it from traditional that's just basically that's a patchwork map i would call it exactly right? it's your it's your map it's your guide and so yeah. you just went ahead and copied that and and then used that as your as your base so if you wanted to you could even you know if you had the ability on your printer or whatever to scan that in and you know, enlarge make it, it larger. You could, mm -hmm. you could make your own personalized size block. Yep, okay. and I uh, it might even say I I don't think it. Um, anyway, I have seen it that you can yeah make them two hundred percent whatever. Um, but what I did is that I just made my own um paper piecing template myself on a piece of vellum paper. Okay, so this is this is it. So, um, before we get there, I do want to show you how I broke it up because you can see that I've actually got two pieces and it really doesn't look like a teacup. Okay, so you do have to kind of put it on two pieces like that. So yeah, hang that. On. before you do that, just one sec because so Francie um brought up something. I she said she used foundation paper and she thought it should have stayed in, it was so hard to tear off. Back to your whole idea of you, the fact that you carry some of those pre-printed foundations. Yeah, and um, I'll ask, uh, Anne is diligently helping me here. So I'll ask, I'll ask Anne to grab one of the June Taylor. Well, um, I think what's interesting about those is because they're not on paper, so they're not on that stiff, you know, and they're on something that's washable, you have the ability to just leave that right in. So and in fact, uh, if Anne hears be... me, I'll have you get the June Taylor that you're doing for your class, Anne, the uh, table runner. So Anne's that would be, be another class, another yeah. advantage. Yes. So, um, and then Kathleen's got a great idea. She says you can make um, four different colors for different different holidays. So, oh, definitely. And yeah, it's a yeah. fun one. It's definitely a fun one. Anne's doing so good here. Thank you. Anne. Oh, thank you, Anne. Anne's behind the scenes. Everybody, say hi, Anne, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. I'm just, Leah has a comment here. She says she did a class with um, Carol Doak. I think that's how you say oh, it. Oh, yes. She's yep. been doing paper piecing patterns 
for eons. I know I did one decades ago, decades ago, and then I added embroidery to it way, way back then. But um, and uh, Judy you know, Nehemiah is another big one. Yeah. Um, so, yes. And they typically both of those women typically put um, the, the printed pattern in with when you buy it. Okay. Um, well, so you're gonna June, you're gonna make it easy for us today. So yeah, yeah tell us this a little bit about that. Taylor product, and Anne did hers in um, Christmas, right, Anne? Uh huh. Yep. So uh, this is a, a quilt as you go, but it's the same idea as paper piecing. And um, let me open it up real quick for you. So this is right on the batting. The pattern is printed on it, so I don't know if you guys see the blue lines. There you go. So see the blue lines printed on there? So those are your stitch lines. So it's ready yeah. to go. That would be a great be, uh, beginner project, wouldn't it? It is. It so is. you sell those in, in um, packages like that. Correct. Uh -huh. And, and somebody... she's got boatloads of designs. So she's got, she's got mug rugs. She's got uh, things to carry wine bottles. She's got purses. She's got quilt blocks. Um, it's, it's a wide assortment and it seems to be something maybe popular again, because I just know it, it sat um, kind of unrecognized for a while, but now I see that she's putting a bunch of new ones out. So I do think uh, there's a revival in the Great. And I've got your uh, website down at the bottom, scrolling oh, along you. there. Thank so you. So if anybody wants to reach out to Beth, um, please, can, please go to our um, website or just give us a call. Yeah, um, definitely. That would be wonderful. Okay. Great. All right. Are you ready for the tools that you need? Sure. Uh, are there Go any other it. questions or are we good? We're good. We're good okay. for now. All right. So we've already talked about that. We need that paper and I'm going to get my list so that I don't um, miss anything. So um, you're going to need um, your uh, rotary cutter, of course. You're going to need something called an add a quarter. And let me show it to you in the packaging so you can see. I'm going to use this one. And what I want you to notice is it's just a plastic ruler, but it's got a lip on this side here. Let's see if I put it sideways. Maybe you can let the camera focus in a second. Um, if you can see that it's got a different um, level to it, so it's not flat. On this side over here, it's got a little quarter inch um, raised area that runs the length of the ruler. Um, and just FYI, um, we're talking about it in paper piecing today, but it's wonderful for a lot of things of cutting a quarter inch seam. Um, you're going to need a straight edge and you can just use a, this is an old books a million card, but you can use a credit card. You can use card stock, anything. Just you need a nice straight edge that's not too flexible. Um, you also need, let me um, go back to the add a quarter rulers. They come in all different sizes. Um, I do tend to get pink just because I like pink. Um, this one is two different sets. So it's got a 12 inch and I think it's a six inch one. And you can get it in yellow. And this is a double set too, two different sizes. Um, what we're doing today is very small. So a six inch is just fine. But if you start doing larger projects, um, quilt projects, that type of thing, you might want the, the longer one. And then you can also just get the smaller one separately. So those are um the add a quarter tool that you need um i have with me today um the rotating mat so i do like this because you're going to find that you're going to be cutting at all different uh directions so this is a mat that uh rotates so that's nice to have on your work surface you do want to have uh some type of pressing tool and there are many many pressing tools out there um, I did get to see um, Jacqueline DeJong. She's another big paper piecer person in person one time. And she had a nice little setup where she had her sewing machine. And then uh, to the side of it, she had a little ironing board with her little iron. And um, actually, I think she used a little wooden iron. Um, so she just could rotate and cut an iron and put it back on the machine. Um, so one tool that you can use is this one. This one's by Clover. So it's just a roller and it's a great easy way to press something if you can't have access to a little iron and it's also very quick um, the one that I like and I'm going to be using today is the fabric folding pin 
So with this fabric folding pen, it uh, you just fill it with water and then you get a little container of the um, starch and you just, I think it's like four to five drops. You just add to the water in here and then put the, the top back on. This is just kind of like a felt tip uh, marker. And what it does is that when I squeeze the tube, and of course I'd be working this way, when I squeeze the tube, um, the water dispenses down into the tip. And you put that, and I'll be showing how to do that. You put that right on the seam and you can fold things open and have a nice crease. Okay, I can't hear you again. I'm ashamed to say I have one of those that's totally unopened in the package and I well, haven't I tried it. You, so I might convince you to use it today then. <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> um, the other tool that I like on my sewing machine is the open toe foot. So with the open toe foot, it makes it just much easier to see the lines on your piece of paper. Yeah, you certainly that's can a, use a regular foot, but the open toe is not. That's a, uh, I think that's almost a must have for, for lots of different projects. Yeah, I do. I do like the open toe quite a bit. Okay. Um, so I think I've got all my tools. Of course, you need your um, fabrics and stuff like that. Um, but I think I have listed all my tools. Um, I am just using regular piecing thread. I happen to have Mettler today, although I do like the Orphil a lot. And okay. I've just selected gray. A gray thread both in the bobbin and on top. Yeah, gray thread. That's a great tip for anybody that's new to doing patchwork at all, isn't it? Um, that kind of nice medium gray thread just seems to blend with, with almost everything, especially when you're using a lot of different prints, right? Exactly. A lot of different colors. Yep. Exactly. All right. Well, you ready to switch over to the machine? Yes. So uh, we'll move the, oh, so let me just go over the pattern real quick, how okay, I did that great. and then we'll do the machine. Great. Um, so this is what um, I printed off. And so I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I can just print that onto my vellum paper and I am ready to go for it. Well, if you guys look closely, um, the pieces um, are four and a half by four and a half. Well, this little piece of paper <laughs> is not, that section is not four and a half by four and a half. So oh, it's not <laughs> actual, it's not actual size. It's not. Right. So they are telling you on the PDF. So if you do want to do the traditional way, um, you are going to cut those pieces to the size that they say on there. So it actually says four and a half by four and a half. So the finished size is going to be a four by four square. Okay. So four and a half by four and a half. So they actually put right on the um, drawing what size you should cut everything. So once I realized that, hey, this is really cute, but it's not going to make a very big quilt or wall hanging. Perfect uh, mug rug, though. It's perfect yeah. for a mug rug or even maybe like a trivet, you know, um, uh, a part of a placemat. Yeah. I, mean, I could see all kinds of different ways to use this. Yes, part of a placemat would be cute. Um. So then all I had to do was realize that when you paper piece, I do not need to put the seam allowances in it. So if it said four and a half by four and a half, I knew that was just a four by four. So I do not have to worry um, about um, that uh, quarter inch seam that's going to be in there. So um, what I did is I determined how big um, the uh, cup was. Let me go back to this and, and show you how I broke it up uh, because there's two steps in this. One is how am I going to continually stitch one piece to the next and have it all come together as a cup? Um, so um, you have to think about that. And then I just had to think about uh, the sizes and how I was going to piece them together. So there's a couple different ways that you can break this up. And the way that I decided to break it up is that I made my cup and saucer one um, paper piecing uh, part. I made the, um, and I happen to remember to go opposite here. I should be used to working backwards and upside down, right? Um, so the handle here um, I made as a separate piece. And then since we were simplifying the top and not really piecing them, we're going to do steam. I just cut that out to the total dimension and made sure that I had the quarter inch seam allowances on it. So that piece of white fabric is, I'll get that in a moment. Oh, right here. 
So I just cut that background that goes on top of the cup. I just cut it two dimensions for that. Okay. And I want to say it was um, seven and a half inches. So I took this seven and a half inches and then I added the four, the two and the four and a half. So it was um, eight to uh, 10 and then the half inch. So 10 and a half inches. So I cut that block the eight and a half i mean the uh, seven and a half by ten and a half inches and so i just used that as a total white square and i didn't have to paper piece that perfect when i came down here to the cup part um i know that i have to have one piece sewn to the next um if i would have started over here on this side you can see that this little piece or maybe you can't see but this is a little two and a half by four and a half inch piece but next to it is a much smaller piece it's one and a half um by two and a half so um it doesn't fill let me go over there it doesn't fill that entire area on the side of the cup so i could not sew that white piece onto my teacup right away because i'd be missing the other parts of the handle so when you look at it um you decide how i can keep sewing the pieces together without having to um, do anything funky so what i did for the handle area And here is my copy. I'm trying to think how I can put it. Well, I'll just hold this part up and hopefully we can see. So here is my handle area. Let me back up a little bit on that. First thing that you'll notice is that it is backwards. So whereas the diagonals up here are opposite over here, see how I have them going the other way. So I did draw backwards on this. And then I have numbered them. So this is going to be my first piece. And since the number two piece is exactly the same size, no problem sewing those two together. And then the third piece I'm going to show sew on is another red piece up here. And then I'm going to go to the little corner and do that one. So now I've got this unit done. And I'll show you this. So it'll be a little bit clearer. Okay. And then um, I saw that I could do that next piece on the bottom do my white corner and then add the white. So let me show you that completed part so you can see what that looks like. I love the way that you broke this all down and simplified everything for us, Beth. So here it is stitched out on a piece of paper. And thanks, Joanne. <laughs> and I'm concentrating so hard. So if something goes over my head, just know I'm... <laughs> no, that's okay. And I'm keeping track of everybody. Everybody's, um, you know, just watching and listening. Good. So good. So this is the handle area. And so this is the fabric on top. And then I have not torn my paper away. So here is the paper on the back side. And you can see the lines that were drawn. And you can see that I do have a quarter inch seam allowance beyond them. OK, so I do keep the paper on until I sew the two pieces together. So what I thought I would show today is physically doing the teacup in the middle, because that one would be um, a lot faster than the handle, just because this was um, smaller pieces. And then this line right here is going to be my seam allowance that I'm going to sew it to the main body of the cup. So I'm going to use that line right on my paper to sew them together. So oh, that's why I keep the paper on, because it helps me to continue to stay okay. precise. So that's a really interesting technique because I, you know, I only I know enough to be dangerous just to how this works, but I would have never thought of even breaking up the sections so that you know then you could just piece them together. I think too that that helps avoid overwhelm. I don't know. I'd love okay. to hear in the chat <laughs> if anybody else feels this way, but when you look at a pattern that is just like a sewing pattern, you know, compared to exactly. a sewing pattern, you look and and you, you, I always open up the envelope and, you know, look, oh, how many pieces are there? If I'm in a big hurry, I know I don't want something that's got, you know, 18 pieces really to put together. Mm -hmm. But when you think of it, really just doing it in modules and you've got that all done. So that gives you a real big sense of accomplishment. Exactly. That's good to go ready. You're ready to go into the next um, process and then put them together when you're done. I love it. And just so you know, on the pattern, um, everything was very similar. So actually with the teacups, uh, you could either trace or photocopy and then modify. And on some of them, they had a nice little zigzag thing. I could do that in paper piecing too. It would just be another section that I might have to do separately and then sew them together. 
And same with that steam. I could actually do that steam in paper piecing also, but it's going to be, um, I think, cuter and a lot easier with our embroidery machine. So I am ready to go to the sewing machine uh, okay. if you would like me to do that. That sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and take you off for a minute. And when okay. you're all ready, just give me a thumbs up and I'll I'll bring you back. All right. So in the meantime, I just, um, again, want to tell everybody how happy I am to have you here. Um, this is a live show, but I want to thank all of you that are watching this on the replay. So um, this is a great time to just um, chill out a little bit, uh, maybe sip some tea and learn some new sewing techniques. We'll be doing this show once a month. Um, it'll be my afternoon show because I do have another show that I do the fourth Monday of every month called So Tell Me. And when I do that show, I interview somebody in the sewing industry and just get a real broad, you know, kind of um, knowledge of what somebody else is doing out there. But these uh, afternoon shows that I'm going to do once a month on Friday thus far, that's my plan, um, are designed to bring you something that you can actually um, stitch out yourself and see the actual tutorial or some, you know, something in the sewing, embroidery, quilting, crafting world. We all, you know, when I, when I ask people, what do you like to do? Do you like to uh, do sewing, quilting, crafting, embroidery? Or do you like to do it all? I get a lot of hands that are raised that that say I like to do it all. So um, I also would like to ask you if you like this video to please um, hit the like button. That helps a, helps a lot in the efforts for uh, producing a show like this. And if you haven't subscribed already, I invite you to subscribe and then hit the bell for notifications. And you'll know every time a new live video or another um, pre-recorded video is added to my Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco channel. So I'm thrilled to have everybody here with us, um, like I said, either watching live or on the replay. All right, I think Beth is ready. So let me get her back up. All right, thank you, Joanne. And thank mm. you. I'm, I'm just really thrilled that you uh, thought of me to help do this because I do enjoy teaching and I do love paper piecing. I'm just so happy to have you here. And you're such an expert and such a... Such a great teacher. I think um, I can be everybody, dangerous too, Joanne. Everybody that knows you knows this, but the people that don't know you, I'm telling you right now, Beth <laughs> loves to share her knowledge and the joy of sewing with others. So um, that's one of the things I appreciate um, most oh, about you. you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to bring you up full screen. Okay, very good. So here is my little teacup. So you can see that I have them numbered. And if you need a visual in front of you so that you can remember what the color should be, um, you know, do that so that you know. Um, on patterns, you know, that's why they had them color coded or sometimes you they'll actually write right on there. So this is the part that I can read the numbers right side up. So this is the top side of my paper. And this is the side that I'm going to be sewing on. However, it's going to be on the back side of my paper where everything is upside down that my physical fabric is going to go. So it's going to go on the back side, but it's going to go right side up. This piece of fabric right here is my fabric number one. So uh, when I get done, this is going to be the fabric in the middle. And fabric number two and three, which are on the sides here, are going to be the red. So I did cut these, you'll see that I cut them. And, and one of the reasons, of course, is that I wanted to be a little bit quicker showing this online. But when I am at home, I usually don't cut. I just take a piece big enough and, and slap it on there and go. So, um, but I'm trying to be prepared for you guys. So we'll go a little faster. So I do have the two sides of my cup ready to go. Um, number four is also red. So that's the bottom of the cup. So I've got a piece that's big enough to cover that area. So when you do cut it, all you need to do is make sure that it completely covers the area and that it's at least a quarter inch beyond the edge on the seam there. So you just need to make sure that it's a quarter inch above, a quarter inch beyond, and a quarter inch below. Okay. And on the other side too, just make sure that it covers the entire area. Um, I have my little pieces of white, and the white's what's going to go in uh, these little triangle corner areas on each side. 
And then my saucer, here's my snowflake fabric. So my saucer is in that snowflake fabric there, and that's going to go on the bottom. And you'll see that I'll be at number seven. So this is really a, um, um, a piece by number. So it, if you lay it out, uh, you'll just know right what to do next. I'm going to flip this upside down. I'm going to cover my number one area with this piece of fabric. And number two is going to be right over here. So I do try to put my first piece of fabric about a quarter inch beyond that line so that I don't have to do extra trimming on this side. I make sure that it's a quarter inch above and below. And when we start doing another piece, I'll also show another way that you can confirm that your fabric is the right side. I'm now going to take the red fabric that's going to be the piece over here, because this is my number two section. And I am going to put these two pieces right side together. So that's the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side. And I'm going to line it up right with the raw edge of that first piece of fabric that I have on there. So you can see right sides together, the edges are lined up. I've made sure that it um, goes beyond a quarter inch on each side and is over that little line that I've drawn. Um, what um, some techniques that some people do, so some other tools that you might want is just a good old fashioned glue stick. So if you, um, this is um, few peaches, pieces, but if you do have something large, like if you do do um, the Carol Doak or the Jacqueline DeJong or the Judy Niemeyer, it's a lot of pieces um, and they do have very good instructions to keep you organized. But what you can do is you can put a little piece of um, a little dab of glue. Let's see if you can see this. I don't want to do it on the line because that's going to be my stitch line. So I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on the paper side inside that sewing line. And that will just hold my fabric in place if I'm at all concerned it's going to move when I flip it over. Some people do just use pins. So you could pin it as long as you're confident that, you know, you won't sew over that. Um, typically, though, I don't use the glue stick. I just um, I just hold it until I get back. So here I'm going to hold my pieces of fabric with my piece of paper. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to put it underneath my um, presser foot. I do just double check. Yep, the fabric's under there. And you can see the glue is holding that one in place. Yes, this one's right side up and it's matched up. So see how those raw edges are matched up. And I'm going to be stitching right on this line. Um, so to stitch on that line, I've got a few helpful tools. And let me get it off for a second. Do you guys see this needle beam? I am on the Stellaire. And um, on the Stellaire and um, also on the Luminaire, of course, it's, the, uh, it's called the Needle Guide. Um, I can project or I can show the line that I want to stitch on. And I'm going to use that line and put it right on my stitching line. My needle is lined up right with that line. So I have my open toe foot on. My needle is in the center position, which is 3.5 for those of you with the brother or baby lock machine. And um, my needle beam is lined up in that center position. When you sew, you are going to start and stop on the intersections. So right here is where the line starts. And right down here is where the line ends. Every once in a while, if I am on the edge of something, I will start just maybe above, above it a little bit to hold those two fabrics together. But today we're just gonna sew right on the line. Um, I've already told you that I like to have my needle set at, um, length set anywhere between 1.4 and 1.8. Um, today, um, I do have it at 1.4. Um, and then the other thing that you do want to do is um, reinforce at the beginning and at the end. So that's a little bit different than your traditional piecing. Um, you um, do need to reinforce where typically we don't do that. So uh, some people start with a smaller stitch and then get bigger. I'm just going to keep the same size and do a couple stitches back and forth. Another wonderful tool that I have on this machine, by the way, is when I put my presser foot down, um, I'm just trying to line that needle up right at the starting point. 
However, I have a setting in this machine that if I touch my needle down, my needle comes down, my presser foot comes up a little bit so that I can slide it, and my needle comes down and helps me line it up right on that line. Now, if I'm a little bit off, I can either move my paper or I do love the knee lift. So I do have my knee lift in place. And when I hit the knee lift, you can see that my presser foot goes up. So I'm just going to scooch it over a tad to make sure that my needle beam and everything is all lined up. Um, I'm going to start sewing. I'm just doing it at medium speed. And um, let me start. Let me get my foot control here. And what I do is I start sewing. So I'm going to do a couple stitches. And then I immediately push my um, reverse stitching key. So I don't know if you saw that go backwards. Um, and I just, as soon as I get a couple stitches, I push that, it goes backwards, and then I release, and now I'm just going to stitch. So I'm just stitching straight on that line, following that needle beam, and then as soon as I start getting close to the edge there, I have my finger ready on that reverse button, and so as soon as I get down there, I just hit my reverse button, and there he goes back, and then I can go forward one and stop. And uh, having a thread cutter is wonderful too. So I do want to thread cut it. All right. And now when I turn this over to the other side, you can see my seam. And I'm going to be pressing this open. So Joanne, I do need to rotate my camera for one second over to my cutting mat, okay? So I know it can get noisy, guys, but let me just rotate. Sorry about that. Um, we'll just um, bring Beth back when she's ready, but I'm trying to catch up a little bit on the questions. Um, I see uh, Kathleen's asking, do you start your paces to make pulling the paper off easier? We'll have to um, have Beth answer that. That's a really, really good question. Um, and then we've had a few comments in here about some of the, uh, the, the features that are on that machine. Um, I don't, Remember, if Beth mentioned, she's working on a Brother Stellaire right now, which does have the feature where you can turn on the, the laser light. There's lots of ways you can use that laser light, but it can literally pinpoint exactly where your needle is going to be piercing. And I could see it being a big, big help in this case. So I think Beth's back. So let's bring her up. So yes, very good point. I do starch all my fabric. So no matter what I'm doing, I do use my best press and starch all of, all of them. It does give it a crisper feel. Um, if it's not wrinkled, also it'll stay in place better. It won't cause uh, you know a warping on my paper or anything. So I do like to press my pieces, although I don't always, but I do like to press them. So as I was showing earlier, here is my uh, uh, seam line. And here is my fabric folding pin. I just tight, um, very slightly squeeze this so that the tip is now moist. And I just run that moistness down. And I don't know if you guys can see that it's just a teeny tiny moist going down. I think you can see it. Yeah, we can see that, that good. Oh, hello. Hey, Laura. And uh, so then I just use my fingers to finger press this open. But because you put that starch product, look how nicely it just stays like that. Oh, okay. So it's you're nice. actually you're actually doing that in place of giving iron. it a press with your iron. Correct. Um, okay. I did show those other tools that you can use, you know, the little wooden irons, that yeah. roller, um, many different things that you can do. But the fabric folding pin, what's nice about that, I don't have to be near power. I don't have to worry about anything. Well, the, that brings up another point. Maybe it's just my crazy line of thinking, but um, most of the time I have my iron set on steam. So if I were to, you know, <laughs> unconsciously go over and, and give that um, a press of the iron, that's probably not a good idea when you've got paper, right? To, I don't know that it would hurt it that much because it's not like you're going to have to press it for that long. So I don't okay. think anything will happen to the paper, okay. but that does give a good uh, a good point. So when I make mistakes, which I have done, of course, um, and I've I've stitched it or I've done something wrong. Well, because I've stitched on that paper, that paper now basically is is got a big hole in it or at least a slit in it. You can just take a piece of tape 
you could use regular tape and a crunch, but the Kimberbell tape, which is a paper tape, and just tape that back up again so that you can stitch on it again after you rip your seams out. So you can just tape your pattern back up. Okay. And then another nice point to make is um, on these next ones, I'm going to be showing you how sometimes you can shortchange yourself on making the fabric big enough. You're like, oh, this little scrap will work. You sew it on and then it's like, no, it did not work. Mm. Uh, what's nice about paper piecing is I can just draw me another line <laughs> on there and uh -huh. stitch on it and add another piece of white. So if if I, for some reason on this corner, I messed up. That I is just... pure genius. Genius. <laughs> well, it wasn't me, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love it. it. So and you can correct your mistakes by seam ripper or just add another piece. We got a quick question here. Cindy King. Hey, Cindy. Good to have you here today. Um, she is asking, is that called a fabric folding pen? It sure is. Okay. Is what it's called. And Great. it comes with the uh, the pen Great. part empty, and then you fill it with water and put four to five drops of the starch that's included. So the little jar that they include, you can imagine, since it's only four to five drops, this will last a lifetime probably. <laughs> yeah. So you got And lot. then um, one more question about um, about the starch. Um, uh -huh. Will any starch work? So define, um, I know I have my favorite and I think it's your favorite too, but um, let's tell Noreen and everybody else here what, um, what you mean by starch when you're actually talking about spray starching your fabric. There are a lot of brands out there and actually maybe it should be called sizing, not starch. Of course, starch um, typically means it has you know, like a potato product in it or something like that. But um, with your fabrics, um, they they can be really, um, you know, flexible. Now this one has been best pressed, so it is a little more firm. But it um, just uh, because you add that sizing or that starch to the fabric, it just makes it a tad stiffer. You can see it's still flexible, but it makes it a tad stiffer. And so it, uh, acts more like a piece of paper than a piece of real flimsy fabric. And it's so much easier to sew. It's brand wise, easy. obviously brand wise, there's a lot of starch out there that's yeah. designed for ironing purposes. Yeah. And I know, you know, those will work, and, but we have better products today. So you, I heard the little yeah. word best press. Yes. Come out and that, and now, that's, that's my favorite. Um, it's just got just the right amount of of body and you can always add more layers. So you just, you know, spray iron, spray iron. But what I love about best press is the fact that it doesn't leave a residue on your iron. Exactly. And all the it's other the starches. Flakiness. Yeah. The other yeah. starches that I've ever used for regular ironing are, are it's very tricky and it does build up. So exactly. um, is that your experience too, Beth? Um, it certainly is. So Best Press was designed um, as a product to use on um, fabric that people are going to sew on. Um, so the complaint with the other ones is that you get that flaky white stuff. So I don't know if anybody else have to use to iron shirts, but you know, um, when, when long time ago, <laughs> yep, I used to iron all my husband's shirts and I use starch for everything. So the thing they like polos now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, the, um, to also just to make sure that doesn't happen, I usually spray, um, my breast press, um, on one side or the other, and then iron on the opposite side. And so that draws it through the fabric so that it really does get into the product and um, draws it right in. And then um, Kathleen's asking, does Best Press leave marks on satin type fabrics? It can, so you do have to be careful. I have had some like water marks um, on it. So um, uh, uh, something I didn't bring out here to show, but something that helps tremendously is to get the Mr. Bottles. So we do sell that with our Best Press. The Mr. Bottles, um, do an excellent job of spraying the, the um, sizing or starch product in a very fine mist so that it doesn't blotch and pool. They are yeah. absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, I don't know if uh, you have anybody there that can bring you one to, to show before we end. Uh, <laughs> hands today, on it, hands on it. That would be great because I know I we when we were together, um, uh, we were using those spray bottles when we did our cruise together. Yes. yes. And um, I, I, I knew that was a must have and I use mine almost every day, almost every day. Thank you, Anne. Uh -huh. So here it is. 
Yeah. And you just fill it with, you just fill yeah. it with the best press. And there are good ones and bad ones. I have found out this is, this is one of the good ones. I don't know if you can see, but it's really not just a clear bottle. There's actually, um, um, I don't know if you can see here, there's actually a, um, uh, a plastic um, lining in there. And so it helps give it, I think, more of a vacuum seal to it when you spray it. So yeah. when you spray it, you don't have to, you don't have to keep pumping and pumping it. It'll just, you do it one time and it just sprays nicely. Yeah. It's a very, I don't know who invented it and where the technology came from, but it, they're very unusual. And, and really, yeah. if and you this one has no identifier, whatever <laughs> on it, you can get cute ones. And of course, uh, Joanne, I use my scan and cut machine and I cut out what I um, put in it. So I have mine with a little iron and best press um, on it, labeled on it, because you can use this for water. You know, you can use it for all kinds of products. What a great idea. Great idea. And then um, Sandra is asking, do the starch products clog the misters? Um, I, I have not had that issue and I've used it for a very long time. Yeah, I haven't had that happen at all either. And um uh, spray bottles on works great for artists. Oh, Thank good you, Cindy. Point. Yeah. Good. Thank good you, Cindy. Point. All right. We ready for cutting? Sure are. Okay. So I have my straight edge. I have my add a quarter ruler and I have my rotary cutter. So I have done section one and two. I've pressed these open so you can see the fabrics underneath. Again, that's why I like the vellum paper. My next section is going to be over here. Number three scooch that over a little bit. So number three is the next one. And I'm going to be adding a piece of red fabric on that side. But I want to trim this so that this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance there because I don't want all this mess underneath. So the very first thing that you do is you're going to put your straight edge on the line that you're going to sew next. So my next line that I'm going to sew is right here between one and three. I'm going to put my straight edge right on that uh, line that I've drawn. I'm on the top side now. My fabric is underneath. And I'm going to fold my paper back, just folding it over that straight edge. And then I'm going to take my add a quarter tool and that little lip part is going to fit right on top of that straight edge. So what's nice about this is I really don't need a long one because it just slips right down. As long as I have that straight edge for it to glide, it'll just glide right down it. I'm going to rotate my mat a little bit so I can um, can do this. And hopefully my hand's not too much in the way. So I just hold my add a quarter tool down there. And I'm just going to cut away that little strip. Okay, so now I've got my quarter inch on that side. I'm then going to take it back to my sewing machine. I'm going to take my next piece of fabric, which is number three, and I'm going to line that right up on the raw edge of that piece of fabric that I just trimmed. Okay. And then I am going to head over to my sewing machine and sew this line. Okay. So I don't know if you want to add something and I'll sew it and then I'll come back and I'll show the trimming again if you want. Or do you want me to switch the camera over there, Joanne? I can't hear you again. Whatever you want to do, you just tell me. All right. So I'll have Ann um, switch the camera over there because um, I. I do like to be able to see things a couple times before I get it <laughs> when I'm okay. doing something. That's fine. I'll let you switch and I'll just say hi to a few people while you're doing that. All right. So I see um, Sybil is here and she says she loves to use uh, a straight edge to fold on. So Sybil, um, obviously you've already done paper piecing and you've got some, some tricks of your own. So that's great. That's great to hear. Um, Cindy says she hasn't paper pieced for a while and this is a great refresher. Great. I, I know, you know, it's funny. There are so many different techniques. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, there's never been a better time to sew, right? Everybody agree with me on that one. Um, no matter what you like to do, there's something out there for you. And we just have so many great tools available and so many great shops like Beth's um, Quilts and Lace Shop in Melbourne, Florida and her sweet time quilting in Sebastian. You know, if you're a, if you're, if you get down there on vacation, make sure you, you swing by and, 
and visit if you're not um, already down there. But um, it's just it's a wonderful world for for sewing um, enthusiasts today, for sure. And um, Dolly had said that she uses um, Best Press, but it um, has not messed up her iron. Yep. I've never had a problem with that as well. So it looks like Beth's back. Let me get you back up here. Okay. So I'll just quickly sew this. And um, and, and um, I wish we had a uh, fast forward thing, huh? <laughs> so I've reinforced it. Now I'm just, again, following my guideline and stitching all the way down until I come close to the end. And then I just quick push my reverse quickly to go back and forth. Go ahead and cut it off and then I'll flip it to this side. There's my new seam and I'll use my fabric folding pin here to dampen it with that starch product. And then I will finger press that open. And now, um, so we've done one, two, three. So my next one is going to be number four area right here. And four is another piece of red. So I'm going to be using this piece here, but I do have to trim it. So Joanne, I'm going to go back to the cutting table and, and it just will take one second. Um, if you want to silence my noisy camera. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> um, Noreen says her shopping list is, is growing. So I know um, that's the other um, really funny thing I think about sewing. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there has a, an old treadle machine or is familiar with them, but I actually have one that I use as my nightstand in my bedroom. And I can't help but think about, you know, it, mine has four drawers. That's it. Four drawers and, and that little pocket in the front where it, it flipped open. And when you think about it, I mean, sure, uh, a lady back then or a person back then sewing would um, likely have their their sewing basket, but they sure didn't have all of the things that we have um, today. And they could fit almost every tool they needed in those four little drawers. <laughs> so true. Tools do help. All right. So let me bring that towards you a little bit. So again, my next line that I'm going to sew is between the three areas that I just did and number four, which is my next one. So I put my straight edge right on that straight line right there. I fold my fabric back. And by the way, another reason why I don't like to stitch beyond where the line ends is if you have to fold the paper back and you've stitched past it, um, all you need to do is um, just loosen it a little bit and, um, and get rid of that seam if you've gone over the edge. So it'll, and of course, it would bring the fabric up with it. So you just need to rip it out of the paper a little bit. So that's why I also try to stop right on the intersection. So my straight edge, I've folded it back. Um, I've now got my add a quarter tool here ready to go back and forth. Let me rotate my mat a little bit. And we'll start way down here. And I just rotate that forward. And it was cutting off the edge of the surface, but it looks like it got it. Okay, so now I've got my new quarter inch seam where my number four is going to go. So if you can see it through the paper, see a nice quarter inch seam. I, you know, you can't get that perfect or I can't get that perfect when I'm sewing piecing the regular way. So I am going to take my next piece of red fabric, which is my number four fabric. I am going to line it up along the edge, making sure it goes beyond my points a quarter of an inch. And if you ever want to make sure that it's wide enough, I just kind of pretend that I've sewn it there. And then I flip it and just make sure, oh, yeah, that's covering the whole area. That's big enough. So that's a way that you can kind of confirm that your piece of fabric is large enough for the area. It, it, sometimes it's tricky when you do the corner pieces that we're going to do in a minute. All right, so uh, let me sew this real quick. I'll come back and then we'll do the corner piece. And um, um, then I, I don't know if people want me to finish this or we can stop there and I can take questions or whatever you would like me to do. All right, so I'll remove you just for a minute. Um, yeah, I think we probably could, um, uh, you know, wrap up in, in uh, maybe another step or two because we've seen 
how easy this really is to do. So I'd love to hear um, from everybody that's here in the chat. Wasn't it easy? How did you feel that was easy? Have you, have you done it? If you haven't done it, do you feel like you could do it now? <laughs> I'm feeling a lot, um, a lot more confident just after watching everything that Bev did. So it really, um, okay. Cindy wants to finish. All right. I'm, I'm good with finishing. If anybody needs to hop off, you can always come on and, uh, and watch the replay here, but Okay, so I'm back to uh, the cutting table here then. So I sewed my next seam. Oh, sorry. Was that noise? Sorry. So here's the next seam okay. that I sewed. Um, I'm just, again, using my little fabric folding pin here to, I think I'd probably have my hand in the way, huh? And I'm just running it along that seam, just making sure I've got it wet. I'll finger press that open. Starting to look like a teacup. <laughs> it sure is. All right. So there, I've got that done. Now, again, I'm going to flip it to the uh, front side or the drawn side of it. And I can see that my number five area is right here. And this I'm going to have to stitch on the diagonal right here. So again, this is my next stitch line. So I put my straight edge on that next line that I'm going to stitch. Fold my paper back so you can see I did go over the edge a little bit. So I just kind of push that down and pull it away from the paper. I take my straight edge and just trim that right off. Okay. All right. So now I have that little corner trimmed off. Now I'm going to get my white piece of fabric. And I'm going to put right sides together. Now, this is where I do like to confirm that the piece that I have picked is large enough. So I'm lining it right on that quarter inch seam raw edge that I just cut. And I want it to cover this whole triangle area right here. So I'm going to pretend that I've stitched it. I'm going to fold it over. And yes, it's going to be fine. I need to make sure that it's a quarter inch on each side of that. Okay, so I do need to make sure that it's going to cover that whole area. And I'm just popping in for a minute because uh -huh. as I'm watching this, I'm seeing how incredibly foolproof this is. Yes. So, you know, I wonder like, like, you know, new quilters or somebody that's, that's just getting started in, in quilting. Like it would seem to me like paper piecing is the way to go for, to, <laughs> to just get comfortable with making, blocks because they're always going to be perfect and then you don't have that fear of of failure <laughs> what do you think about that um so i don't get that response usually <laughs> when people are learning to paper piece they do not look at this as being easy and probably the reason for it is that you are having to hold that fabric together uh, turn it upside down um, i do think it's nice and easy but um i don't get that response typically um, I was a little concerned about that piece that I had on there before, by the way. So I'm I'm picking a bigger one so that I don't do a mess up <laughs> on the show. Well, so. I've, I've got a comment up on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. It's from my friend um, June. And she says she was never into paper piecing, but Beth's method looks much easier. Oh. So she'll think she tried again. Oh, and yeah. I, you know, I'm feeling the same way. I just love the way that you're you're giving us all the instructions and you're making Good. it, you are making it absolutely foolproof. So Good. Um, I think, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. So um, I'll go. Uh, so this real quick, do you want me to move the camera there? Sure. You can do that. And I'll bring you back when, when you're ready. Um, just looking again at the comments. Um, Linda says so easy, but she's <laughs> sure. As soon as she starts, she will have mega questions. Um, and she wants to finish it and loves it. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, well, you you can definitely um, get in touch with Beth if you get um, stuck on anything. And she herself and her uh, people that work in her shops are, are real true um, sewing um, experts and would love to be able to help you for sure. And Cindy says um, she definitely got perfect points. I mean, that's, yeah, it's just, I, again, I'm just seeing this as just such an easy way to have the finished block look exactly like it was supposed to. Um, another just little aspect that I don't think we brought up, I'll bring Beth up and see what she thinks about this. Um, this whole idea of stitching on a foundation, Beth, 
uh -huh. kind of eliminates the tendency of maybe stretching something out and yeah you know exactly and that's why they were saying when you um why it's also a good technique for uh, when you are doing bias type things then you won't tend to stretch that bias as you sew the two pieces together because you're just holding it flat on that piece of paper so so that exactly yeah. exactly and then my friend um lee she says she's loving that you're using a relatively normal size pattern um, yeah. other than one of those itty bitty ones. So that's another really good point. You might want to just talk about that for a minute because there are so many out there that are intricate and I don't think those are the ones you want to start off with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, uh, I'll just go back and forth and um, I've got one, two, three, four more pieces to sew on. So um, I'm wondering, Anne, is there any way we can, how about if I put the cutting mat here and then we can just put it right down. So I'm going to move the camera again. We're going to try to hopefully put it in a place where we don't have. Okay, that's fine. I just took you off for just a minute. Um, I think that, that, you know, kind of made me think of another thing though, as I'm watching Beth create this, I wonder if you're thinking the same thing. It It's another advantage to this is that you are able to do everything sitting down. I mean, yeah, she's, you know, you doing cutting. Um, but you were eliminating the pressing. The cutting can be done on a very small mat. Um, I know I like to have a mat right underneath my machine so that no matter what I'm doing, if I need to just trim something really quick, I might pick up the scissors, but I can also, you know, use the, the rotary cutting mat. So I have my mat just sticking out of about, you know, maybe a, a few inches from my machine and it's underneath it and I can just get right on that on that edge and, and cut from there. So I think you're back, right? I am back. So I'm doing some trimming here right next to my sewing machine. This is actually more what I would do in real life. Um, so I, um, I've trimmed my number five area here. Now I'm going to go over to. And Renee, I'll just um, bring up Renee's comment real quick. She says she's been, um, it's, it's probably been 10 years since she's done paper piecing, but you are motivating her. Oh, so this is a very motivating show. So thanks nice. for that comment, Renee. Thank you. Um, number six area is the next one I'm going to do. So again, I am going, and that's my sew line. So I put my straight edge. I flip my paper back, put my add a quarter tool right on there and trim. And now I'm going to grab another piece of white fabric because I am going to be, where's my camera? I'm going to be sewing this white on right down here. So, so I'm going to put uh, right sides together. I'm going to make sure that if I sew it, it's going to cover the whole area. And it is. I'm going to turn this back to my printed side where I can read the numbers right side up. And use my knee press to lower my presser foot there. Line my needle beam right up on my line. And go ahead and sew. Reinforcing at the beginning. And the other nice point about this is if you do miss the line, it's still precise. Oh, <laughs> great. Not the line. And Beth, could, Nobody you tell, could you tell us again what stitch length you're, you're actually using? 1.4. So uh, when I'm doing my regular traditional piecing, I have it at um, 2.0. If I'm doing garment sewing, it's at 2.5. So this is a lot smaller, 1.4 millimeters. And you can do up to 1.8. But okay. by having it close together, um, as I said earlier, it makes it um, so that the paper is going to tear much more easily. And um, also, um, it's not going to fall apart on you because you're not really um, going over the seams as much. You're stopping right at the intersection. Pressing that open, turning it back to my right side, taking my straight edge. And now I'm going to trim because the next one I'm doing is number seven right here. So I'm going to turn this over, flip this and continue trimming my quarter inch for here. 
And then Cindy West is asking what kind of paper. You're using the vellum, correct? I am using the vellum paper, yep. Okay. And Cindy, if you happen to um, get in a little late in the beginning of the show, Beth um, showed all of the different options uh, for using uh, different kinds of papers paper. for, your, for your base. All right, and now I'm doing my snowflake, which is gonna be my saucer down here at the bottom. So again, right sides together. I trimmed my raw edge so that it's a quarter inch away from the line. I'm gonna put my snowflake material down here. I want that big snowflake in the middle. So we're gonna put him right there, right sides together. And I, I don't know if, um, if um, I mentioned it or not, but another thing about um, the best press and sizing your fabric is your fabrics actually will hold together nicer, nicer too. So it gives a little friction to it or something. Oh, I did not know that. Great tip. I'm going to bring it over to my sewing machine here. I'm starting at the beginning of that line using my knee lift to lower her down, lining up my needle beam. My open toe foot allows me to see really easily. And I start stitching a couple, do a reverse to reinforce it, and then I just go across. And I haven't noticed, Beth, are you using your uh, uh, cut button at the end? Or? Yes, I certainly Mark. am. I, okay. I don't think I could do paper piecing without that cut button. That's a real big so time saver. So and a big thread out. saver, too, right? Yes. Let me just, I, I've got a lot of extra here, so let me just cut that off. All right, again, going to use my fabric folding pin here. And, uh, I'm using more than I should, but I'm trying to be faster here. So, <laughs> All right, press that open. We almost got her. Go back to my right side again. And um, that was number seven that I just sewed on. Here's my number eight right over here. So I that's the next line I'm going to stitch. So I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to put my little straight edge on that line. Fold my paper back. Do my add a quarter tool and cut right across oops does help to open the blade okay so there we go and i've got one more over here to do uh, number nine so let me get eight on here real quick i am back on the fabric side up i'm putting my fabric right sides together making sure that it's going to completely cover that last final corner on my saucer I'll bring it back over to my sewing machine. And you can get to that you can plan ahead. So typically, probably I would have cut all the angles, both angles off so that I could just sew from one to the next. But, um, you know, you'll get that way with time. Reinforced it, stitching across, stopping right where the line stops when it hits that other edge. Reinforce it and use my scissors to cut it. Okay, and my little fabric folding pin here. Okay, press that out. Okay, and now I'm going to trim my other side. So here's my last piece that I have to do. And then we can sew the two pieces together so people can see how I sew the handle in this together. Straight right. edge is going on my next line right up oh let's see oh sorry you can't see it so right up here all righty fold my paper back take my add a quarter tool always close your blade by the way i almost sliced the edge of my hand okay trim that All right, I'm going to now sew that final piece on there. It's looking so pretty. It's working, isn't it? So there we go. Yeah. I'll go ahead and sew this one on. Look at Anne's cleaning up. I saw place. Anne's hand sneak in there and clean up. <laughs> you can bring her home with me, huh? She makes life so easy. Anne, I need this. We, we could all use an Anne. <laughs> yeah. 
All righty, so we are done with the bottom of the teacup. And I'm going to do my final trimming because now what I'm going to do is if you guys remembered when I created my pattern, um, I did not include the quarter inch seam allowances on all the sides. Now I'm going to make sure to do that. So everything is sewn. I got all my pieces. There you go. And now I'm going to trim all the way around so it looks more like a block. So I'm going to put this back on this side here. And I've already trimmed the top side, so we're good there. So let me put this on my rotary cutting mat here. I can get rid of my fabric folding pin. Now you do want to make sure. So accidents that happen is one, people forget when they put their straight edge on the line and they fold the paper back. Um, they forget to put the add a quarter tool on and <laughs> they just cut. So that's one mistake that happened. So don't do that, guys. All right. So I'm just going to put this on here and I just crease the paper with that a little bit. And I go all the way to the bottom here. And slide the tool up with me as I go. And I got it cut all the way down. So now I'm going to rotate my mat again. And now I'm going to move my straight edge over to the bottom side here. And if you could push everything, Beth, just a little closer to the machine. Unfortunately, you know where how how the name, your name is shown at the bottom. I can't take oh, that yep, off. Okay. So that'll bring that into view a little bit better. Is that a little better? Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so I just put my straight edge on the outside line. If you guys remembered when I drew it. Hmm, I thought I had another one. Yeah. So this is another one of my drawings. And um, so we are, you know, doing this teacup here. Let me make it right side up. I don't want to trim right on that line or it's going to end up smaller. So that's why I'm using my straight edge to go right on that line ooh, this way um, and then adding a quarter of an inch all the way around it. And that way, uh, when I sew the other um, two pieces onto this, I have that quarter inch seam allowance. OK, good point. So straight edge, flip this back. And I am going to have to, there, maybe that's all right. Okay. Straight edge, let me make sure I got the straight edge all the way down, by the way. There. If I put it in the middle, that's probably a good spot. And I add a quarter tool. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, another nice quarter inch cut. And I'm going to flip it one more time. Straight edge right on that outside line. Fold the paper back over it, making sure I'm right on it. Okay, add a quarter tool, start at the bottom, and then just slide it all the way up. Okay, so, oops, yeah. couple seams there. All righty, so now if we bring this to the front side, where's my little cup? Now I'm going to bring my handle back. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we do have some questions, but I'm, I'm okay. saving them all. And we'll, we'll once you're done, um, we'll, we'll bring them up and we'll take care of them one by one. I gotta find my handle. What do I do with my handle? Oh, right there underneath. <laughs> That's usually where it is, right in front of your <laughs> eyes, right? All right. So I've got three pieces that white part that's going to be on the top, my teacup here, and then here's my handle. Now, this is when um, I did use um, pins for this because I did want to make sure that the bottom of my handle uh, did line up nicely with that right there. But I'm going to put right sides together. And um, I am going to line, because I cut quarter inches everywhere, I can just line all my quarter inch seams up 
Are you able to see that? I'm just lining my court. So visually, I can see it through the paper. Mm -hmm. We can see that. Okay, great. And then I just take some pins. Okay. And um, I am going to make sure that my corners line up. So I'll hold this up. Hopefully you can see it. So see how this is the corner of the, uh, the handle right here. And I'm going to push it right through um, all the layers. And then on this side, I'm going to confirm that it went through the point on that side. And he's close, but he's a little off. So I'm going to move him just a hair over. Okay, so all I'm doing is making sure that my corners line up and I push the pin all the way through. So I push the pin all the way through that intersection on my handle and I've made sure that on the other side, it, the pin lines up with that intersection. Looks and then good. I'm going to take another pin and I'm just going to pin that in place. Okay, then I remove this first one. Okay, and then my next uh, important um, spot that I like is right here where the handle is. So this is just like you would do with regular traditional piecing. You'd want to make sure that it lines up. So I am going to stick it right through the intersection where my teacup handle um, I sewed on. And I'm going to make sure that on the other side it lines up. I'm a little bit off. So I'm going to, I don't know if you guys can see through all my fingers here, but I'm going to move him just up a little bit. We can see that pretty good, Beth. Oh, good, good. So I'm just making sure it's going through the intersection on the other side. I'll push that pin all the way through. So now I know that's lined up. And I'll get my next pin and just hold it in place. And while you're pinning, do you want to tell us a little bit about what kind of pins you're actually using? So these are the flower head pins. Um, it's not as critical with uh, this project if they're flat. I do like flower head pins because rulers can go over them. Um, I also like glass head pins if I do feel like maybe, um, uh, you know, the iron might touch it. But uh, these are just the flat head pins. Um, heat um, Magic Pins has come out with um, some pins that are heat resistant. So you can get them uh, that they're very easy to grip or they have now just introduced flat ones that your ruler can go over too. So that was a nice introduction by Magic Pins. And I'll have my Vanna <laughs> go get those. I don't think you can ever have too many different kinds of pins because they no, all, every pin true. has a purpose. <laughs> I have a whole drawer full. Very true. And then um, I have several pin cushions because one's got to be next to the machine, one next to the cutting mat. Okay, and then I'll do this final pin. And then I'm ready to just sew these together. And as you can see, I have not torn the paper off yet because I'm going to use the line that I drew right on it to sew this. Oh, here she is. So these are the new Magic Pin um, flathead ones so that you can put rulers over them. And what's really nice about these is they're super easy to grip. So those kind of have the flat heads to them. And then they have them in all different sizes and lengths. Um, I do like the, um, the fine or the extra fine. And um, because they slide through um, the fabrics nice and easily. And they've got a nice grippiness to them. I haven't seen those. I've been using the flower head pins for years to, oh. you know, put well, the ruler like over. Too. But those look even better. Are they, they thinner? Are they? Um, they have several thicknesses. So they've okay. got um, um, extra fine, fine, and then they're regular. The extra fine is 0.4. I think the fine is um, point, um, 0.6. Oh, here it is. Here's a fine is 0.6. And then the regular, I'm not sure how thick those are. I tend to only get the fine and the extra fine. Nice. All right. So I'm ready to sew this seam. Now, remember, I've been working at a little bit of an angle and trying not to get my hands in my way. So uh, cross your fingers uh, that it will um, sew together correctly. Oh, another point to make um, is that I am no longer, and in fact, if I wanted to, I could change it to my two point millimeter because I'm really no longer paper piecing. 
um, so I could change my stitch length. But I am going to start all the way at the edge. So I don't want to start on the line anymore or it'll be flippy floppy there. So I am going to start at my edge and sew all the way down until I run off the fabric on the other side. Because this is like sewing two blocks together. Right. So now you're, you're, you're piecing traditionally. You just happen to have paper attached. Correct. You got all it. All right. <laughs> And a lot of people are, are are raving about the magic pins and putting them on their on their shopping list. Oh, good, good. And then do make sure that you and I'm doing a sloppy job sewing here, and Joanne. <laughs> it's um, hard to sew sure on camera. Them. It's definitely <laughs> hard to sew on camera. And remove your pins. Do not sew over your pins, please. Great point. With that, let's see how well I did. Ah, I could have done better, so I'll have to go back and, and redo this. My handle isn't perfectly lined up there in the corner. So. Oh, but that came out so pretty. Oh, my. That is absolutely beautiful. I nice. love it. I love the, um, it. Thank you, Joanne. I just, again, so happy you inspired me to do this, so that was nice. Um, my final piece would be this uh, part that's going to go on top. So I would just sew that on and then I can trim my block to size. So I would just sew my quarter inch. But I right. thought I would show uh, tearing the paper off too because um, a little bit of an art to that. Okay. And then when you're done with that, we'll touch just briefly, um, literally just for um, a few seconds, we'll talk about uh, how you could add that steam and some Good different time. options for that. Okay. So um, because my stitches are so close together, um, it, it's going to rip fairly easily, but I do still tend to hold the seam just a little bit. So I don't put any more pressure on that seam than needs be. And then, um, so one hand I'm holding my finger on the seam and then the next, uh, the other hand, I'm ripping the paper. Um, some people do have to use tweezers if you've got little tiny spots to get in, but you can see this rips off pretty easily here. And I'm just curious, Beth, if um, if if you had parts that were a little bit tricky to pull out, would misting it with a little bit of water help? That might soften it up. Okay. Yep. Or the tweezers, or uh, like I said, the the other really nice product is that uh, that one that does dissolve away. Yeah, that's so, it, that's uh, yes, that would soften the paper up. So I, I'm thinking okay. Mister might well, help too. I love the fact that you gave us so many different options for the foundation so you can use different ones in different situations if you've got just a really simple block that's going to be easy to tear you can use that less expensive paper yeah if yeah. you have something you really need to see through you could use the vellum if you that is a got something that you want it to dissolve away and not have to worry about it you use that one there's just so many different ways and so i usually just started by tearing it so anyway there we have it so do we want to do the steam uh, stitching the seam on the embroidery side of the machine. Um, I'm sorry, I was looking at a comment. Would, oh, would you okay. repeat that? <laughs> I am ready to go to the, uh, um, if we want to show how to do it on the embroidery machine. And I think okay. Anne has already put it on the, the machine. So, And Anne's already got it on our machine here. Okay, that would be great. Um, while you're setting up, I'll okay. just take you off screen for a minute and I'll show uh, one of the ways that I uh, thought of to create that that steam so perfect I'm just looking I've got uh, what distracted me I've got a few more friends popping in uh, Roy Garland is here hi Roy it's good to have you and um, Cindy is um, asking she missed what are the magic pins um, Cindy if you just scroll back just a little bit the magic pins are a new flat style pin and uh, they allow you to put a ruler on top and they're also designed for you to iron over. So there's a quite a, been quite a few few comments here. So and uh, Jeannie, hey Jeannie, it's good to see you. It's been a really, really long time. So you know that's I can't help it. One of the most fun things about doing a show like this live, obviously, I mean, I know there's a lot of value in watching the replay. So I definitely hope um, if you're catching this on replay, you are enjoying it. 
And um, if you want to see more of this, please uh, like and subscribe. But um, it's just so much fun to connect with everybody. And I know we're going a little bit long on the show today, but I really wanted you to be able to see all of the steps. I know um, I'd love to hear, you know, in the chat, but how many of you, it's frustrating sometimes when you get just an, enough information to make you curious, but not really enough to empower you. So, you know, when Beth and I planned this out, we really wanted you to be able to go from start to finish if you want to complete this. Obviously, if you want to just you know, kind of zip through it and pick up different parts here and there, you can, but we really wanted you to be able to get all of the information that you needed so that you can complete this on your own. And I, I've been sipping my tea while I'm, while I'm here and mine's almost, almost gone. So I don't know if anybody else has been sipping tea while they're here. All right, Beth, are you ready to embroider now? I'm pretty ready where I just got to change my foot. Okay, while you're doing that, I didn't quite finish what I was going to show here. So I'll okay. come back come back to myself. All right, so um, what I did uh, for for the, the steam, um, it, there's a couple different steam styles in that in that pattern. And what I did is I printed it, just um, printed it on white paper. You can print the whole page from the PDF. It's actually attached to a, a you know to a cup. Or I used, um, and various computers have this option where you can snag part of an image on your screen. So that's what I did. I just snagged the, the part of the steam and then, um, you know, pasted it in a file so that I could print it on paper. And you can change the size later, but um, if you're going to be stitching this manually, then you want to kind of, you know, you might need to print a few to get a good idea of size. But if this looks familiar to any of you, this is the scanning board for a Luminaire machine. And their, um, you know, Brother Dream Machine has this option. Then there, um, there's the Stellaire that Beth is working on that has the, the camera option that you use your own camera in your phone and you capture the image and send it to, to the machine. But essentially, once you've got this image either scanned or sent, you can open it up in My Design Center and it you can, you know, read the uh, illustration right into that software program. And with just a few clicks, or I use a mouse a lot of times, but just a few, you know, punching a couple, a couple buttons, you can turn this into stitches and just normal, ordinary straight stitches is what I selected. I selected a double run and um, you can resize the, the, the design before you finalize it. So make sure you, you know, pay attention to what you needed for your particular block. And then once it's turned into stitches, you can hoop it up like Beth is doing with hers and you are ready to stitch this out. Now, if you don't have this, I'm gonna bring um, Beth back up, but if you don't have that option, um, you simply could use this, you know, uh, if you've got a light box or you take this up to a window and put that piece of paper up there and put your fabric over it and trace that off with a water soluble marking pen and you can just stitch right through it with uh you know regular straight stitches so you could even use a you know a, a marking pen if you're if you've got artist pens that can be drawn on fabric so there's a lot of ways you can do it if you want to make it really simple you could take just uh stitches from your machine like a a wavy stitch and just you know stitch a few of those the the sky's the limit. Do what works for you and maybe play a little bit on a scrap of fabric first and experiment and see what you like. Right, I'll move the camera behind me. Are you, are you good? I'm getting there. Okay. Um, I took a picture of the teacup in the machine. And, oh, good. Maybe you can see it. Uh, yeah, almost you can see it. My thing's too big and I gotta. Okay. All right, so I'm going to embroidery and I am going to. Um, I think we got it uh, in the machine, right? Machine. It's saved in the machine. So um, we have already saved your design in the machine here, the steam up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one right there. Yep. I've, so I've I should say that I. 
I scanned mine and, and sent it to you so that you could just stitch it out. <laughs> exactly. She did it all for me. I'm going to go ahead and set it. And it's telling me that the image was sent from my smart device. So uh, this is the app that I used. And I took a picture of my product in the hoop and uh, sent it. So I'm going to say, OK, carriage is going to move. I'm going to say, OK. All right. And so I don't know if you can see, but my little teacup's in there. Yeah, we can now see my that. My theme is upside down, so I do need to rotate it. So I'm going to go up into edit and I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And I do need to make it a little bit smaller. I do have to use the special feature on this machine uh that can um not only make it smaller but change the number of stitches on it so let me make this smaller and then we'll rotate and i'll move it up a little bit and now what i'm doing is i'm lining it so that seam is perfectly lined up with the edge of my teacup and then i can make sure that it's nicely centered however i want it to be yeah so can you guys see that yep um, I love the way you're able to see it before you you stitch it, but um, this would be another another thing that you know printing it out and putting it right on your fabric would give you an idea of the size too if you're going to be stitching that manual. So, you know, it's great to have the tools that we have in my design center on the brother machines. I'm a brother ambassador, and um, those are the machines I use. But uh, you know, everything else we did today was ordinary straight stitching. And that steam can be added with ordinary straight stitches to manually on your machine. So don't let that um, stop you. <laughs> yep. And so um, Anne is telling me here, and I won't bother to do it right now, but of course, if I was doing this for real, I would uh, put in my um, embroidery thread for the bobbin. Um, just so you know, there's two different ways I could have hooped this. So I did hoop it with a no-show mesh, which is a lightweight stabilizer. This is a very light pattern, so I really don't need much on it. Um, this, um, I figured if I put this in it, it can stay in the design. So if I did decide to do all of my teacups and put the steam in there like this, um, then it wouldn't be different thicknesses and layers to my quilt top. You know, it would be just a nice thin layer on there. Um, it is so light. The other thing I could have done was to just hoop a tearaway stabilizer, stitch it out, and then I could tear away that stabilizer. So either way, I think would have worked with this project. Lots of options. All right. So ready my machine real quick. Let's see here. All right. She's threaded. And I am going to uh, say OK and go to embroider. And the other thing that I can do to make sure that it's precisely placed is I just move my needle um, uh, to the first stitch that it's going to take. And um, and then I just make sure it's not running off the edge or something like that. OK, so I'm ready to go ahead and stitch. And it looks good to me. Um, you know, by the way, the other thing I can do is I can also just put a little nice pin. I don't know if you can see the little pin light on here. I think I'm just off. yeah that's a little hard to see yeah All and right. i don't remember how long that takes to to stitch but maybe we can answer some questions while that's stitching okay it does say two minutes okay well we can get a couple questions in in two minutes yep. <laughs> all right so let me see here let me i've been saving some questions um we have you can put me on quiet oh that's okay you can talk over it we'll be fine we'll be fine um so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Linda asks, uh, she says the original teacup pattern was very small pieces. When you add a quarter um, to oh, your larger pattern, question. you do the same for small pieces. Oh, good question. Excellent question. And especially some of those small ones that I was showing you. No, you can change that to, um, they actually had an add an eighth ruler. So you can trim that to an eighth. And just so people know, um, the add a quarter tool is a tool that I love, but you can just use your ruler. I mean, you can use a ruler and just hang it over the edge, but the add a quarter just is kind of a safety feature. 
but she is so right. Just uh, you could cut it to an eighth of an inch. You're just going to have to be a little bit more careful, of course, uh, in your seams. Okay, good. And then um, uh, Dolly asks, when you have the block done, do you sew around all four sides before connecting the next block? I'm going to treat it just like a block that would be for traditional piecing. So it's a block and no, I, I would square it up. So I, I probably will make sure to square it up with the other blocks that I did and then just sew them together in the quarter inch. Okay, good. Very good. Um, and then um, uh, Sharon says the fabric is so cute. Beth, can you special order this layer cake because she can't find it on your website? Is this um, I'm afraid our website uh, does not always keep up to date with all the new fabrics that we get in. Um, this fabric actually is, I believe it was from last year. However, this designer, and it was called Create Joy, um, has come out with several new, um, so I do have some of this on the bolt. So I did try to use something I had in the store. So if anybody was interested. Um, so give, her, give Beth a call. They uh, do, they did come out with a new um um oh i'm not gonna remember what it's called it's not called create joy i will have my vanna go get the the 10 inch uh, square so i do have the 10 inch squares and it's a beautiful assortment of course i have bolts too and what's nice is that it matches the um the new create joy it's not called create joy that 10 inch squares and running and running um it is done uh, let me take All it all right and I'll show you how nice it did oh, with coming so uh, next good. to the teacup. Oh, my. Let me bring you up full screen so we can see that good. Didn't that it do well? is absolutely stunning. That is amazing. I'll go ahead and pop it out of the hoop. So let's talk about some ideas for, um, again, how, how you could finish this. And let me just oh. mention really quick. Um, uh, uh, Christina asks, uh, was there a pattern? And yes, there was. And the link is posted in the chat, both uh, here on YouTube and also on Facebook. So yep. you can find that. And if you need help, you can always get a hold of me from just visit me at letsgosew.com and I'm happy to help. And I did put all the links, by the way, on my website too. So I put the Great. links to Facebook, YouTube, and for this pattern yep. on there. Um, and uh, another thing, too, I guess just to clarify, the pattern uh, was written by um, Kate Spain for her fabrics originally, but I am using, um, um, this is um, Laura Mir. So this is Laura Mira fabric that I actually used, although I did use the red is grunge. I love the grunge. Um, but this is the, the new one that she has out. Oh, is that pretty? And this is called, um, this is the Create Joy Project. So I guess they're continuing that same thing. So these are the 10 inch squares and they're just beautiful. They look like watercolors. And Very we do have pretty. stripes and everything with them too. So anyway, um, we, we've been making sure to get her line every time she brings it out. Uh, we've got so many great, great comments here. I'm just popping a few of them up on the screen. You've just done such a great job, Beth. It's been, oh well, Joanne, you helped me out tremendously, so thank you. It's really been really been a lot of fun. I know we went we went a little bit long today, so um, I appreciate everybody uh, sticking with us. It's just yeah, uh, really you. if you really want to see what what's going to work, you need to <laughs> you need to see the whole thing, right? <laughs> But I, I um, you know, a couple of people have said they're, they um, are inspired to do it. So I hope so. Don't be intimidated by it. And like I said, what's nice about paper piecing is if you make a mistake, just add a little piece of fabric um, to it and create your own line. <laughs> Absolutely. You've made this so easy and so much fun. So Good. I think we're about ready to wrap up. Like I said, my tea is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. And um, I just want to thank you, Beth. This has been absolutely thank wonderful. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you for uh, letting me share and for uh, visiting with me here in Melbourne, Florida. Oh, and thank you everybody for being here. So happy sewing. Until next time, I wish you a world full of pretty stitches. Bye, Bye -bye. everybody. Thank you.